So greetings from a beautiful morning here in Pennsylvania once again, and welcome to the realm of the Albert, which <laughs> you can see the title of the video. Yes, yeah, so this is another uh, Bigfoot in Pennsylvania episode, but one with a slightly different twist to it than what we've done already. So we are down here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania today, southeastern Pennsylvania, at a place called Chickies Rock County Park. We've been here before. We're no stranger to this place. It, down here is where the St. Charles Iron Furnace is. We filmed that, filmed that several times. And I have filmed this legend before years ago, but I want to include it in this series as well. So what is an Albert Witch? <laughs> well, first of all, where does, where does the name come from? The name is supposedly kind of a corruption of the word apple snitch. I'll put that down below there. You know, snitch is someone who steals. So an apple snitch is the idea of a creature that would steal apples from folks. So back in the 1800s, early 1800s, maybe even late 1700s, when the settlers first came to this area, started coming down here to the river and picnic and stuff and things like that. There was legends of a small humanoid figure, about four or five foot tall, hairy, covered in hair, kind of like a, think of a, ho a hobbit from Lord of the Rings, but completely covered in hair. Kind of like a little pygmy Bigfoot creature that lived down here. And they would uh, steal apples from people. They supposedly throw them back sometimes. Legend says that they would like sit in the trees and then only came down when it was time to eat. So picture in your mind, you know, you're out here picnicking and like a four foot creature, all covered in brown hair from head to toe. You're sneaking out in the woods, sneaking around the woods or coming down out of the trees. You see one of those. That's, what, that's, what the, that's how the legend goes, the Albert Witch, the Apple Snitch. There's some dispute as to whether the creature is a, comes from Germanic lore, because a lot of the settlers here were from Germany, or if it's in more of a Native American tradition. And one of the main reasons I like this story is because it predates, you know, the, the Bigfoot craze of more recent decades. You know, this is, this is an older story. You know, everybody's kind of familiar with that iconic footage from, was it the late 60s? I think they filmed it on California, that that Bigfoot creature, you know, walking across like a dry creek. I think we've all seen that footage at one time or another. That's kind of when the whole Bigfoot craze really started, Sasquatch thing. Then people everywhere started having sightings. But this legend predates all that. And it's not the only one that does. Of course, back then they didn't refer to it as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. They often used words like a hairy man or a wild man or even like a gorilla man for what they were seeing. That's what makes this story interesting, is that it, it predates the more modern sightings. So not everything Bigfoot or Sasquatch related is modern. There are older stories. Not just here in Pennsylvania, but around the world. That's kind of what I find intriguing. I think I kind of mentioned that in my intro video. This whole Bigfoot phenomenon isn't just new or just you know, confined to the United States spans the world and, and the centuries too. And of course, like I said, some people think this story has more Germanic origins from Germanic lore. But I do lean towards more the Native American traditions. Oh, get out of the way, bicycle coming. Because there are a number of Native American traditions concerning this small, hairy hominid creature living in this area. And supposedly the Iroquois or the Susquehannocks had a painting where they painted this depiction of this creature on their war shields, as some would say. And then there's also another tradition amongst the Algonquin-speaking Native Americans of something called the Mega, Mega Muesus, I'll put the name down here, another kind of small hairy creature that kind of lives more amongst the rocks rather than in the trees that would cause mischief in the woods. So there is a there is a Native American tradition for the idea of a pygmy Bigfoot type creature. But this legend of the Albert Witch could become a mixture of all those things too. Maybe the settlers that came from Germany took their lore. There's a creature, oh, I forget what it's called. I'll put it down here below. It's one of their spirit beings that they believe in that causes mischief as well. 
maybe it merged with the idea of the Native American legends. Because that is something that often happens with these legends. You know, you have tales from different cultures kind of merge together and form a whole new tradition of sorts. But like I said, I find this one intriguing because like I said, it's old. It dates back, you know, to the clo more colonial times, even perhaps Native American times. So what do you think? Is there any, could there be any truth to this story? Of course, if you come looking for one today, you're probably not going to find it at all. I guess the legend goes, like here, right now, this place looks all beautiful. This is the Northwest River Trail, I believe, here at Chickie's Rock. Beautiful, but back in the 1800s, mid to late 1800s, the Industrial Revolution hit this area. And this place was just lined with industry. I think there might be a picture up here somewhere on one of the information boards, but it's all because of iron furnaces and buildings. So the legend says that the Alba Witch was became extinct in this area or was driven off due to all the industry. Because if you hike or bike along this trail, there's all kinds of ruins along the edges. Like I said, the St. Charles Iron Furnace is up this way. I passed some ruins on the way here. Might film some of them on the way back. But over here is the Pennsylvania Canal. You can see the remnants of it right there. There's, there's a railroad over there. Up here is a railroad tunnel. So this place became very industrialized during that time. That scenario does make sense. I mean, even today, there's places throughout the world where industry is driving animals to extinction or driving them out of their territory. So remember, when it comes to this series, I'm not trying to prove the existence of any of these creatures, Bigfoot-like creatures or whatever. So I'm just trying to present them to you and let you decide, or, just, or for myself, trying to look at it from different views. Because honestly, I am kind of skeptical of this story. But at the same time, I come to wonder, could there be some truth in some way to this story? You know, did a creature, perhaps, you know, centuries ago, live in this area? Something that the Native Americans were familiar with. And then at some point, driven out due to settlers moving in. Maybe it was already rare by the time the settlers came and then because of their, you know, moving in and clearing the land and eventually the, like I said, the Industrial Revolution, maybe that was the final blow to this creature. It's a possibility. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying that that's what I believe, but I'm trying to be open-minded about these things. It's a possibility, though. Because there are other situations like that, which I could talk about um, with other animals, that they were already rare before the Europeans came here, and then the Europeans kind of finished them off. There are, there are um, examples of that. So maybe this was something else like that? You'll never know, maybe. Let me know what you think. Oh, but what is this up ahead? <laughs> this is the railroad tunnel I mentioned earlier. I think it's called the Point Rock Railroad Tunnel. This tunnel has nothing to do with our story. I could claim that, you know, the Alba Witches dug this tunnel, you know, centuries ago. <laughs> but this is part of that industry that came here in the 1800s. Pulpit Rock, or uh, the Point Rock Railroad Tunnel. But that does bring us to more modern times. There have been some sightings, even in modern times, supposedly. I think back in 2002, someone claimed that they were driving on the road up here and at night, and a five foot, you know, humanoid creature completely covered in hair ran across the road or stopped right in the middle of the road. It's about five foot tall, completely covered in brown hair, turned around to look at him and his big yellow eyes, and then just ran off into the woods again. Kind of fits the description of the Alba Witch. So there have been sightings in modern times, too. So that would kind of do away with the idea that they were extinct or driven off. But of course, maybe if the story's true, maybe a few were still in the area. So as you know, I am a skeptic. But a story like this holds just a little bit more weight to me just because it's based on much older traditions. Like I said, perhaps even some Native American traditions which gives it just a little bit more um, plausibility, in my opinion. Like I said, if it was true, like I stated that story earlier, maybe there was a creature that lived here, like I said, centuries ago, that the Native Americans had in their mind. Maybe it became extinct because of the Europeans, the settlers, and the industry that came here. So maybe it was already a rare species 
I'm not saying that that's what's happened or that's what I believe. I'm just saying that's a possibility. Trying to be skeptical, but also have an open mind about things. Yeah, right up here is the ruins of that iron furnace that we filmed before. Might as well just go down there. Kind of shows the industry that we're talking about that came to the area. And perhaps drove the other which way. <laughs> and here are the ruins of that iron furnace. What you're hearing is the traffic from the Route 30 bridge over there. But here is the St. Charles Iron Furnace. We filmed here a number of times. But could this have been the doom of the Albert Witch? I mean, here's an information board. Kind of, this kind of shows you what it looked like down here. I'll cover in ants here, but painting the St. Charles Iron Furnace back in the day. So there have been a ton of other stuff here. That's all that's left today. But this is what it was like all down this trail here. Like I said, this didn't happen until like the 1800s. Mid 1800s. And we're going back through the tunnel. <laughs> I should mention too that this area, speaking of Native Americans, this area is rich in Native American history and culture too. Just up where Chickie's Rock is, there's like a little rock ledge or like a cave or a rock shelter. And they found, uh, I forget what day, it was many, many moons ago. <laughs> They found the remains of a, of a dugout canoe and some other artifacts at the base of that cliff. So what do you think then? Do you think there could be any truth whatsoever to this story? Whether some of the stories in modern times or some of the traditions going way back even to like Native American times. Like I said, as always, you can let me know in the comments what you think. As I say in the series, you decide, all right? Like I said, try to keep an open, try to keep an open mind, but be a be skeptical at the same time. All right, I think that'll be it for this story and the Albert Witch. All right, as always, thanks for coming along and uh, we'll see you on the next one.